high cancer family. I am so thrilled to be talking to you about December. Specifically cancer, you guys. This is a really, truly magical time for you. And one that I think is so symbolic and sacred and beautiful and empowering. Um, and it could feel a little bittersweet. I will be, I will be honest about that. There is kind of a bittersweetness in this month. Um, really, this hinges on a few things. Let me start shuffling these cards. And by the way, by the way, before I get super into this, if you're interested in what the year ahead is going to look like for you, I did a year ahead video for cancer for everybody, for all signs, sun and rising are fantastic. I'll leave the Vimeo link below. They're really great for getting a sense of the overarching big transits. And I also pull some cards for the, the intuitive side of that conversation. So please go check that out if you're interested in feeling empowered and excited and energized and curious about the new year. I think it's going to be beautiful and it's powerful for you. And December is kind of the preview in so many ways. We have this full moon at zero degrees of your sign. A card already flopped out. Oh, five cups. Yeah. See, there's the bittersweet. We'll talk about this. Don't worry too much, right? Um, that zero degree moon in your sign, it is a doorway. It is a portal. And it is a huge invitation to becoming the next version of yourself. And when I was thinking about your energy this month, the thing that came to mind for me is, you know, when you start to really move differently through your day, through every hour, through how you live your life by feeling that self-worth, that self-love, that calmness, have you noticed how sometimes really efficiently things will just disappear out of your life? And it can kind of like be a little jarring because it's in the big spectrum, you can zoom out and see how it's good for you, but it's also a little traumatic on the surface. It's a little bit like, uh, I have to grieve that. I need a second to just collect my energy. Like, what is happening? Why are things moving in that way where it's so fast? You know what I mean? I think like that's some of what's going on with you. Um, so lead up before we get to that zero degree full moon in your sign, there's a lot of other things going on. We are up until December 19th and post shadow Venus retrograde phase, seven of cups. Oh yeah. This is like dream world, you guys. This is like going up and meeting your future self on the platonic. And I mean like Plato and his philosophy of the ideal in the in the stellar, in the um, divine form, and how it, we are constantly trying to manifest down here that mirror image. That's what I mean by platonic. But le we're recovering from Venus retrograde really until all the way through Sag season, basically. So even though we're done, and even though we're moving on, and there's other things going on that's there, Eight of Swords, don't worry, Cancer. This is a magical month. This is a magical month, and I'll talk to you about why these cards make sense and how awesome this really is. Ten of Wands. Okay. Yep. It's very symbolically burning down who you've been for the last... For some of you, the, um, a lot of you, this is going to be multiple years. That's what I will say about Cancer. What we're talking about here is at least two years and up to seven or eight years of who you've been. Um, we still have a Mercury retrograde the first week of this month, and it is retro riding right back into Scorpio, your fifth house. Venus is going forward into Scorpio, your fifth house. So you're getting a review on the practical side with Mercury, and you're getting a forward push on the on the romantic side in both directions. Oh my gosh, Cancers. You're going to have to ride with me here on this discussion today, because um, this is going to be really powerful. Sag season is always really interesting for cancer energy because it's kind of electrical and intense. And for you, you know, Sag aligns with taking care of your physical body and your daily routines. And one thing I would say is focus on that this month. Focus on, you know, eating healthy, getting some extra rest, checking in with yourself. Just really enjoy those rituals of self-care this month. 
leading up to that full moon because we have a new moon in Sag in that sixth house, hanged man. We have a new moon. And there we go. Six of pentacles, two of wands. I'm going to pull one more. New moon in Sag on the seventh. Um, things are just kind of moving around. All the, the game, the game board is being reset right now. You know what I mean? Like leading up to the solstice and to this full moon, the game board's getting a big reset. And to do that, we kind of have to finish out the game, you know, get all the way to the checkmate and then the, the acknowledgement of that checkmate before we really put all the pieces back and the world popped out. Okay. Yep. Yep. Cancer. This looks really scary, but it's not. So Capricorn season obviously is the mirror season of Cancer. It's your opposite sign. Um, during the time when the sun is in our opposite sign, this is a time where we are reflecting on how we relate, how we connect, how we uh, project our energy into the world. It's always kind of a trippy time when we're in our opposite sign. It's definitely a time of uh, kind of internal searching, but also connection. And along with that full moon at zero degrees of your sign, we are heralding in a long time or a, a number of months over the course of all of 2019 where the North Node is in your sign, where eclipses will begin to happen in your sign. We are heralding in a time where you'll be moving differently through the world and you are feeling that. And that is why so many of these intense cards are showing up because when you know that you are about to hit into new territory and you are about to become a new version of yourself and you know that that is coming, you have to be sure you aren't smuggling in any old energetic habits because then if those energetic habits are with you, those energetic um, head spaces are with you where you still believe that way or you're still thinking that way or you're still holding yourself there, it won't allow for you to meet and converge with your future self, right? So yes, there is maybe some warning going on. Maybe there's a past relationship that you just have to make peace with that loss, right? Maybe there is a scenario that you have to make peace with. Maybe there's a version of yourself, one that believed in a project or believed in a life path or believed in something that you thought was going to be in your life for 20 or 50 years. Maybe you have to give yourself the grace to realize that it's okay that that shifted. I think that there's something really powerful in that. Um, and we often don't give ourselves that grace to say that it doesn't have just because we believed it and we were really adamant about it and it didn't happen doesn't mean that we were wrong or we should be embarrassed about it or we should, we're not allowed to change. We're not allowed to morph because now you have more information. Now you, you have to morph in life in order to have, because information is always coming in. Perspective is always changing. Divine source is always going to be bringing us new information, which is what these next two cards are about. Yes, this is the fog. This is kind of a magical fog. And anymore, I've gotten into this place where when I see this energy, like Seven of Cups and Eight of Swords, people are so freaked out by the Eight of Swords, you know, it's like, oh God, you know, like, <laughs> what's holding me prisoner? What, like, mental landscapes are in? That's one way to look at fog. And a lot of us have been trained to fear fog, to fear slowdown, to fear those times when our dreams are extra trippy and our downloads are extra weird and the wisdom is working through our bodies. And even those times where we're feeling like we don't relate to even our closest social circle, you know, like those times when you just kind of feel like you're outside of that and you're almost watching the world from a different vantage point. We've been taught that that's scary, that that's bad, that we need to avoid that, right? Like our culture is just like, no, 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 you just got to keep going. Like you should know what you're doing. You should have your five-year plan. You should have it in a notebook. Man, is that wisdom? It's not wisdom. That's not wisdom. That is fear based control mechanisms that are based on this idea of survival in a world that is out to get you, right? So, in that context, this conversation right here looks terrifying to the fear based survival tactics, right? But on the soul level, this is wisdom. This is download. This is taking that moment to sort through your soul's mansion, go through all the rooms, create the space for what you want, 
and reconcile with anything that is no longer serving you. Toss out those old poisonous cups, let them go, and really imbibe from the ones that feel good. Now, this process feels quiet. It's like opening up a cupboard. And in that cupboard, there is food, but there's only the things that are going to sustain you. It's not jam-packed with a whole bunch of crap like old chocolate chips and marshmallows and, um, you know, weird cans of soup. It's going to be packed with very nutritive, clear, concise information, which when you open that cupboard and you just see this is, you just have your nutrients there and you don't have all the other stuff, it's going to be like, oh, is this okay? Am I okay? Am I okay? Maybe I need to have something more. Like maybe I need to go back to like when it was more complicated and there were those people in my lives and I felt complex emotions about all of it all the time. And I felt like I had to find the balance for it all the time. Maybe I should go back to that. So there is energy here that is going to be holding you there to, to connect with this and to ask those questions and to look into that cupboard and to say, yeah, actually I do just want the nutrients. Actually, that sounds a lot better. Let's do that. So there's that Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands in it is an invitation to put down an old burden, to put down what no longer serves you. The thing with the Ten of Wands is we get into this thing of like, I'm going to control this. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to power through. I'm going to power through. I'm going to take it on my shoulders. I'll make it happen. And then you get nowhere. And then you're wondering like, why aren't things unfolding the way I want? Why don't, why, why am I just not getting that thing I said I wanted? I, I asked for it. Isn't it supposed to be I ask and then I receive? Isn't it supposed to be that I ask and then I receive? Oh, you've asked. But I think sometimes your conscious mind doesn't realize that you're asking at a level which is so much higher than all this crap right here. What was I saying when you move differently in the world? Things leave your life very quickly. Things that don't serve. Because when you're in alignment and you've asked the pieces are going to move very quickly to get you in alignment to have that new board game set up. But if you keep trying to put pieces from the last board game in the middle of the new board game, you're not going to be able to play that game. Not that it's a game, but you're not going to be able to engage with that, right? So everything about December is like, just, just be sure. Like, Do you really want that on your game board? Do you really want that in your cupboard? Do you really want that in your mansion? Now, you may feel like you need to make a lot of big decisions in December. And like you, you just need to figure this out. You need to figure this out. You just need to get to know. Two of Swords, though, is protective in the sense that it is holding you back, just like the Eight of Swords, right? These cards could be perceived as very scary, very intimidating, very um, discouraging, right? But the thing is with these, they're just asking you to take a pause, they're telling you that it's okay if you're not moving on everything. They're telling you that it's okay not to constantly have a, a rational, intellectual reason for everywhere that you're putting things. They're telling you that it's okay to not always be constantly making action, 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 action. Sometimes our greatest invitations, our greatest insights really come from the quiet. The thing that I get with you guys is house cleaning. Spiritual house cleaning, maybe physical house cleaning, maybe a lot of physical house cleaning because that's symbolic. You know, when you clean out an old drawer or an old closet or an old um, pile of papers, there's like an emotional reflection of that in what you're doing. This is definitely a time to clear out clutter. And that can feel freaky, right? That's the hanged man. As you create that space, you're going to feel lighter and lighter and lighter. And you're going to get more and more information about who you are becoming. You're going to feel that you are stepping into those shoes and it is going to feel extremely magical. Yes, you may feel a little distanced from like your typical routine. You may feel a little distanced from like certain friendships or certain situations. You may feel a little bit like you just have to go take extra time for yourself. And that Honestly, the thing that I get with that is that you're going to enjoy it. It's not it's not a punishment. This isn't like hard homework. You're not putting on weights and like this is something that you will be enjoying. This is something that you are engaging with and because you are ready. You know, sometimes we say we want to clear out the clutter, we want to clear out who we've been, we want to start fresh, we want to open those doors and we're ready to do it. But we're not really ready and so we're kind of resisting it. We're like, "Okay, I'll do it because I guess I have to." In this case, there is a sense of joy in the doing of this clearing of this space. There is a sense of savoring the hell out of it. And that's when we start to get 
this little boat ride of joy coming in. And as Capricorn season opens, I do think you will be feeling the pure and utter magic of what is happening here because this is about connection and huge openings. This is about opening a giant door, opening a door that you have craved and longed for for a very long time. This is a door that is about reciprocity and evenness. Now, when I see the Six of Pentacles, it goes back to this idea of take very good care of your physical surroundings and your physical body this month. Start there. Don't overthink it. Just do it, right? Just take that time out every day to move your body. Take some supplements that are good for you. You know, eat your greens. Um, really simple. Pair it back down to the simplest thing. Find equilibrium and balance in your body. Meditate if you can. As you do that, you are inviting in more of this balanced energy. And this is where you want to start from. As you invite that balanced energy in, you get the expansion forward. Where we were looking behind us at the beginning of the month and, and reconciling, using that Mercury retrograde to slow down. At the end of the month, we are looking forward and only forward to who you are becoming. That full moon is going to be epically intense for Cancer you guys are going to feel it to your bones. I really would recommend just taking that time for yourself. Um, slow down, check in. If you have people that you really trust or are close to, spend time with them, definitely. Because this is the kind of stuff you're going to be getting in. And it could feel a little overwhelming. You know, two of wands is the doorway card to manifesting your next thing. World is the graduation card. The world to me is like it's it's going to a graduation that you feel is really well deserved, that you're very excited about, that you're really into, you're so proud of your accomplishment, you get your diploma, and then your phone rings, and somebody's like offering you your dream opportunity and a plane ticket, and all expenses paid to the next thing. Like you don't even have that gap between getting your diploma and like getting the next thing. It's, it's so immediate. And the thing, the way that the world works is that it's that agreement that as soon as you decide that you are good, you are totally good. You are good making the space. You are good saying goodbye. You are good letting those cups drain off. You are good knowing that you learned what you needed to learn over the last seven or eight years. And you are good with all of it. As soon as that happens, it's like, great, here's more. Great, here's more. But, you know, you have to be ready. And if you are feeling like you should have been ready for this uh, last December, I can tell you there is a lot you learned in 2018 that you needed before you could get these opportunities. Because they're big. And when we get information before we're ready, it's just crippling. It's just scary. It's just the kind of thing that makes you want to get under the blankets and hide. And it, we do sometimes ask for things we're not ready for. And sometimes they show up and they peek their head and we just freak out. So you want to be prepared. Take this month to prepare. Take, take Sag season to prepare. Take that full moon and prepare and listen and receive. Clear out that space. Take care of your body. Get your stuff in order. Get ready like you're about to move into your dream house and you're moving out of some old house. Whether or not you're doing that or not, which some of you might, get ready for that relationship that's going to be really present and really balanced and really kind of, you're going to be learning new skills by saying, yeah, I'm not going to entertain old habits. You know, there are so many ways you can clear and, and, and just, I really think about like translating that into like physical things you can do and not just sitting there in your mind, like I'm going to meditate my way into cleanliness. It's not like that. You just, yeah. So like just being as practical as you can will really help you navigate this energy and you'll be finding that you'll be getting those like nuggets of wisdom as you're doing it. So that's my biggest suggestion for you because you are really like seriously you're going off to a new horizon. You're going off to a new destination. What you call home, what you call identity is changing. And that can feel really destabilizing. I think you're ready for it. I think you're excited for it. But I think, you know, you want to be gentle with this. And that's why there's so many energy. They're like, slow down, take a breath. Because you're getting a lot this month. I love you guys so much. Please check out my Vimeo below. I'll also leave my website and my email. I do private readings. I'm just booking a few months in advance. So you want to plan ahead for that. Um, and I will see you in January. All the good stuff's in the description box. I love you guys so much. And I'm really excited to see how December treats you.